Well, 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 look who's back. <laughs> it's great to be how's, back. How does it feel? Wonderful, I missed you, I missed Millie, and I missed Esper, and I'm now home, and I'm feeling good. My father is settled and happy, and that's all we can ask for. Good, positive, great to have Liz back, and uh, someone pretty to look at once more. <laughs> Just before we dive into this week's episode, we should give a quick shout out a massive thank you to everyone who contributed to Sombat's uh, medical cause uh, campaign that we ran this week and the news is looking good isn't it? Yes it is, he needs um, some assistance still with breathing and he's still in intensive care but he's had uh, some smaller operations which have been okay uh, and he, he's stable and he, there's a tiny tiny in, uh, improvement. Mm. So to you guys we really appreciate your help it was just mind-blowing to yeah. get this level of response from all of you people from all around the world uh, who've never met this guy no. but uh, we really do appreciate uh, your contributions to, towards that and also your kind messages as well which we will relay back to Sombat uh, later on um, but I think that's it now we're going to stop the campaign because we have uh, plenty of funds yeah we have enough to keep him in the current hospital to take him to a better hospital in Phuket and a little bit left over in order to uh, help him and his family while he's recuperating and not earning um, any money so it's all good Des who's running the campaign here said thank you for your incredible generosity but he just wants to call it a day now so from this day onwards no more uh, Sombat um, contributions thank you but thank, thank you, you very much we should just mention Liz came back with not one but two suitcases full of stuff mm. stuff for the boat and also stuff for these videos as well so we've been spending some of our patreon money on some improvements on our video and also our audio yeah. for, for our stuff so we're gonna get Liz to give us a quick breakdown of all of that in among this week's episode so let's go and take a look crap more crap, lots more crap. This is the state of the boat at the moment, but at least one person has found a nice little sweet spot. The problem with this is that we have nowhere to sit. So it's pissing down with rain and the wind is coming from over there. And today is the day we've chosen to put the lid, our dodger, on the boat so we've got the crane at the ready but nothing's happening right now so we've had to bring quite a lot of stuff down and uh, we're just waiting for the rain to stop and the wind to stop and then we're going to put the hard dodger on well put it in place at least I have to switch over to the waterproof camera because as you can see it's a little bit wet uh, we had a bit of a storm coming through this morning we're supposed to put the dodger up on the boat this morning but because of the weather and the strong winds obviously we couldn't so it's now after lunch and uh, we've asked the crane guys to come along and lift the dodger onto the boat so now we are just preparing the dodger ready to be hoisted up this should be quite interesting obviously we've got a very big travel lift that has the crane on top of it and that's what we're using to hoist the uh, the dodger onto the boat but there are some restrictions the first of which is that we have a mizzen mast obviously we can't take that down so the travel lift can't come in from behind and then we've got the issue of the crane on the travel lift is uh, right on the edge so I don't think it extends out outside of the travel lift what we're going to do is do what I would do is just get it up alongside see what happens and just take it from there the best way.
but it's a bit close, wasn't it? Just managed to get that travel lift around the uh, port side of Espa and uh, on. Good work. The crane was literally just touching the mizzen shrouds, uh, but managed to get it on with the help of one, two, three, four, about six people. Oh, and I don't know what to do. How's that look, okay? All right? <laughs> Every yachty when they go back home goes with an empty suitcase and returns with a full suitcase and this is no exception. Um, I actually had to get a second case this time. So I'm going to go through all the wonderful stuff that Jamie made me buy when I was back in the UK. So first of all, I just showed you this card. It's, um, it's a white card and a colour card so that when we come to editing, we have something to look against and check, colour checker. The other thing that might be immediately apparent is what I'm wearing here. It's a Tascam mic, it's supposed to be one of the best you can get. So let's see what the sound looks like. And it comes a really neat little package like this. We have one each. Just, just show how small it is. Oh, okay. Because it's yeah. tiny. You can't see it? Barely. Yeah, so this is the package. There's a little power pack. You might be able to see it there, which you put on your belt or somewhere on your person. And then the mic itself, that's it, that. Basically, this is a gimbal for um, the various GoPros that we have. Um, and it allows us, it's going to allow us to shoot as we're walking, talking, sailing, pretty much for the action shots. It means that it's going to be really stable and a lovely, beautiful, smooth image. We're very, very excited about this. It's going to be interesting to see how it works on the boat. And we also have a new GoPro, which is, it's not completely waterproof, is it? But it's water resistant. No, no, the, Go, the GoPro is completely waterproof mm -hmm. and the gimbal itself is rainproof. Okay, so we'll be able to be out on deck when it's mm. pissing down. Mm. <laughs> okay. The thing that's exciting me most of all is that I am now entering into the world of real camera ship. And after a lot of debate and a lot of research, this is my new camera. It's a Canon M50. And it is small, neat and light, which is what I wanted. I find Jamie's a little bulky. And every time I pick it up, he says, now you do know how to do it. And I say, yes, from now on, I have my own one. So there's the Rode, which is one of the best uh, mics you can get for cameras. And on it is the dead cat. Although this dead cat's a little bit big, but it hopefully will work. Um, and then also with it, Jamie said, get some filters. Oh, all, all kinds of other things in here. So it's all wrapped up. I don't really want to unwrap it, but this is uh, an LED spotlight, which is going to go in, in the roof of the hard dodger. That's right, isn't it? Oh, we've got one on the port side and one on the starboard side. Right, that's going to allow us to make better quality filming when we're up in the cockpit, uh, get the right light. And so no matter what's going on in the background, the light will be correct. Is that, am I right? And just to make it even better, this fits over the top of it and just diffuses the light. Jamie's the perfectionist, and I hope you're going to enjoy the new diffused light. Okay, we're at the stainless workshop now, and one of the guys has been polishing one of the davits which we can see right here, doing a rather good job. So if you remember, the top block up there was removable originally, and we have now welded that in place. So that is now solid. And at the bottom, he has added an extra 10 centimeters or so to extend the tube so that it's the correct height. So that is actually a connection there, but you can't see it. So that's good work. Okay, a little bit too noisy to be talking in there, but what you saw was Lek, who had the two mil frames, which he's going to build for the large solar panel on the davits. You also saw, I think it was four mil uh, stainless sheet, which is gonna be used as a support to put in the curve of the davits to give that extra strength as well. OK, 
Okay, so what we've done here is we've ground away to reveal the retaining nuts, grub screws. So this is operation remove log bearing. So what we need to do is to push this down the stern tube uh, with an attachment on the ends and then we'll unscrew it or screw it up from the other side to try and pull it out. So we've shoved our contraption down the stern gland inside there. Ricardo's going to be at the other end and he's going to try and screw on a nut I think on the threaded bar that's gone through. We've got a big washer which kind of fits the uh, this diameter, the outside diameter of the bearing. That sounds like he's there at the other end. I better put this down because we've got to start shouting at each other through the stern tube. So this is our bearing that goes into the log and as you can see there isn't much in the way of extra thickness and but what I mean by that is if you look at the cutlass bearing that we have and the P-bracket inside diameter of an inch and a half which uh, matches the size of the shaft uh, but the outside is two inches and this one is definitely not two inches it's uh, I, I think it's smaller than two inches which is a shame because I would like to put another full-blown cutlass bearing like the P-bracket uh, into here but unless we bore this out uh, that's not going to be possible so we're just going to have to replace with another homemade tool on bearing. We've been talking about it for ages, but I finally got an updated boat stamp because a lot of the countries we're going into, they want you to stamp all the paperwork. So this now has our logo, the name of the boat and our SSR number on it. Something for patrons specifically. I designed a postcard. Our new radio, tuner, very, very important. Obviously can't get it here, this particular scene, and is that why I had to bring it over? One of our hatches has always been problematic, so we've got new handles may not look much that's because it isn't much because the rest of it which is a huge bilge pump which i carried in my luggage is now on the boat jamie bits <laughs> clearly we couldn't get these over here in thailand they are shackles specifically for the anchor and we got these because they are the best in the business one of the other things that i need to do is i need to put netting over every single open space in the boat for when we're doing the larger crossings this is so that if we tip everything doesn't go flying out. So it will go over the bunk areas, the bookshelves, above the, above the sink, above the galley. And I got this net, it's really fine, but it's UV, it's everything resistant, and it's very, very tough, and it's nice and light. In here was the thing that you were most excited about, the three-way switch, which came on the 11th hour, just as I left. And finally, every boat should have one. A winch handle. Pushing that dodger on was one of the most nerve-wracking things I've ever been through. I don't know, I prefer hauling in and out on the boat, but I saw the dodger, saw the crane, saw the guys, oh dear, it looked so dangerous. And we had all that rigging and I could just see things crashing and dropping. So you may notice you don't see me much <laughs> in that particular <laughs> bit of the uh, video because she, she I went below. below, Millie and I sat down below listening to all the cranks and bangs and shouts. Right. Yeah, and of course we had, we had uh, some bad weather when we did that as well. So there was a little bit of wind, so yeah. there was that kind of movement. And it was quite tight getting the travel lift down the side of Esper uh, in among all the rigging. But, you know, we did it and uh, it worked and it is on. But of course, what you see there in the video and where we're at now in real time, whilst Liz has been away, has been some incredible progress mm. there's so much involved in getting this thing put on because it isn't just about making it and putting it on the boat uh, we've got all the electric cables to run uh, making sure that the stainless work keeps it nice and straight and solid uh, a bit more carpentry involved uh, because we're running the tracks now for mm. all the canvas work so obviously you guys are a few weeks behind what's happening in real time um, but uh, yeah it's mad how much stuff is going on with it it really is Obviously while I was away I've been in touch with Jamie practically every day and I've been watching the videos just like you have but I've got a little bit more information 
He has made slight modification to the Dodger, which will be coming up in mm. the next couple of weeks or so. Mm. Um, just making it really, really strong. So really excited about that. We're actually about three weeks behind, so we're pretty close. If you watch us on uh, Facebook and Instagram, you may be able to see few more things that are more recent but uh, other than that patreon yeah of course if you're a patreon then you do get little sneaky peeks of the work in progress that we don't publish on social media so if you do feel like supporting us and getting a glimpse in real time of where we're at then uh, check out followtheboat.com forward slash thanks and uh, sign up and support us that would be great and if of course you don't want to be paying a monthly subscription then we do have our rum fund which is there for people that just want to give off uh, give away one-off contributions yeah so. just want a couple of dollars here and there yeah and if none of that floats your boat you can still help us if you want to help us by liking commenting sharing and of course subscribing peace and fair winds Okay. The boat should have at least three. Yeah. We have got some, but we've got this one. It's a short, short. Oh, God. I don't want to know, don't want you to go and leave me behind. No. I don't want to see if it isn't me who's on your mind.